Hey guys, thanks for joining today's quick tip. Today I'm gonna to show you spatial generalization through heat maps and contour plots. So what is spatial generalization? Let's take a look at this analysis. Uh, I have these Boston Airbnb listings. These are different um, locations where there's rentals and um, I have them kind of colored by price with darker values for higher price. Now, I get this big distribution of points everywhere, but if I want to generalize that to a region, I can do a heat map. I'll just select these values, and what this has done is calculated where the darker red values are the higher priced locations, and these uh, blue values are the lower priced um, locations. Uh, it's, I can also just select, for instance, all the apartments, and this is showing me the whole Boston area. Here's where the most expensive apartments are. Um, here's, I'm going to select houses, here's going to be where the most uh, expensive houses are. Uh, if I want to just look within a price range, I can select this, I can see just these cheaper ones and that's where the most expensive of these cheaper ones are. And let's say I want to have something with over a couple bathrooms and filter that, it's going to generalize that. So this is all changing and visualizing based off of my selections. So um, today I wanted to show you how I created this. So um, the heat map and contour, first off, I'll, I'll point you to the TIPCO exchange. This is on the TIPCO community. Um, you go to exchange and then you filter by spot fire and you can filter by data functions. And here you'll find um, various uh, R data functions I use with tear and spot fire. And there's a map contour plot one. There's also a spatial heat map one, which also generates uh, contours with the heat map. So this will do both. Um, so you can select this and it'll take you to a download page. You go to releases and you can download, um, you know, if you're using a cloud version, if you're using a platform version, you can download that and it'll generate this zip file. Okay, so now back in Spotfire, what I've done is I've taken this analysis and I removed my heat map and contour plot so I can add it from scratch for you. Um, so I removed that data in and I went ahead and unzipped the zip file I had just downloaded. So once you've done that, you, you can go into data function properties and register new. And once you've unzipped that zip file, you can import the contents, which is um, you just want the SFD file. That's the data function file. This is a script we're gonna use. And this is the R script right here. And I can hit run, which is going to ask me to wire up the different inputs and outputs of that script to my data of uh, my Spotfire analysis. So it says here that it wants an X value, and this should just be whatever my um, you know horizontal columns are, my X coordinates are, and that's the longitude. So I'll go to column, my Airbnb listings, and I'm gonna choose longitude. And for Y, I'm gonna go to column, Airbnb listings, and I'll choose latitude. Now Z is gonna be anything I care about. So here I care about prices, um, I could do this by number of bedrooms. I could do this by the deposit. Um, if I have, let's say, oil and gas data, I want to see production on different wells. I can do this by oil produced on wells. Or if I have different stores and I want to see sales at the different stores, I can put that in as well. It's just something I care about is my Z value. So I'm going to go to column and I'm going to choose, again, price. That's, that's what I'm going to show in this analysis. Now, um, Below that, there's a smoothing scale. This is an optional parameter, it's not required. I'm just gonna leave this as default, um, and I'm not gonna enter it in. I think the default is listed here. Uh, no, the default's not listed here, it's usually 0 0.5, but the smoothing scale, I'm just gonna leave for now. And on output, I wanna generate a heat map table, and I wanna generate a contour map table. So these are the possible outputs, I'm just gonna generate those two. I could generate a ma major contours, but I'm not going to generate that. Um, the other thing I want to point out is if I just ran this as it is, it would run on all the data and it would just be static. And sometimes that's what I want. But if I want it to be interactive where I can select different data, um, select like the apartments and the houses and the prices and have it all adjust, what I need to do is tie this up with my markings and I need to refresh the data function automatically. So I'll hit refresh automatically. And for each of these, it's only gonna use the marked rows. So this, this chart uses marking this gray marking. And I need to do this for each of these values. Just make sure it's checked with that marking. 
OK. So now I'm going to hit OK, uh, clear some of these warnings. Those are, those are just warnings. Nothing went wrong there. And I'm going to hit Close. And um, now I'm going to select this, but nothing's really going to happen. However, what it just did behind the scenes is it generated this contour and heat map table. So let's take a look at that real quick. Let's do a uh, table visualization and let's look at contours. So it generated this geometry and this level for the contours. Um, if I select something different, it's going to recalculate and regenerate all of these new values. So I want to add this to my map. What I'm going to do is it's really quite simple. I'll go to my contours and I'll take the geometry and I'm just going to drag and drop it over and it's going to create a new feature layer. Now when I select something, I'm going to get these contours shown. Now I want to do the same thing with my heat map. So I'm going to go over to my heat map table. Also I'm going to grab the geometry and I'm going to just drag and place this over. Now this just looks like a grid, um, so not particularly useful right now. I need to format this. So I'll go to my layers and I'll go to my heat map. Well, actually while I'm here, let's go ahead and move these other layers backwards. So my heat map and contours are going to be um, on the top. So and now this heat map, I'm going to go to settings and let's format this um, with appearance. Let's take the polygon border weight, make that zero. So now there's no borders. Um, let's kind of increase the layer transparency a bit. And on colors, let's color this by the level. So now this is showing me darker values for higher prices, lighter values for lighter prices. Now, a color, I really, a color scheme I really like is actually the example and the contour plot um, uh, example. And you can go to these examples from these data function uh, downloads by clicking this or saying uh, try in the cloud version. It'll take you to a cloud version where you can try this stuff. Now, I like this color scheme. And so another tip I'm going to show you right here is actually using the uh, color picker, which I think is really useful because you don't have to do it within just Spotfire. It can go anywhere on any screen. And I can pick from this color picker. And I'll choose the blue there. And I'm going to add a couple points. So this one I'm going to add as a percent, that 75% value. This one will be 50%. And this one will be 25%. And I'm going to color these the same as well. So let me just do that real quick. Okay, so now I have here where I zoomed in, I have my contours and my heat map. So I can actually turn off my heat map if I just want to see the contours. And I can even turn off my other points if I just want to see the spatial distribution there. And also note that in your contours, you can go to properties and you can go to uh, the settings there and you can color this as well. So you could color this by level as well and just show the contours with different different colors. So that's about it for this quick tip. Uh, hopefully it was useful for you guys and we'll catch you next time. Thank you.